On October 1, 1993, stand-up comedian Bill Hicks performed on David Letterman's new late-night talk show for the first time. It was a classic Hicks set that everyone had come to expect. In less than seven minutes, Hicks delivered some of his most stinging commentary on America to date. Unfortunately, the only people who saw Hicks' set saw it live during the show's afternoon taping in the Ed Sullivan Theater. The comedian's performance never made it to air that evening. Letterman cut Hicks out of that night's episode. Today, we're going to find out why David Letterman banned Bill Hicks from The Late Show. But before we get started, take a second to subscribe to our channel, Weird History. If you hear or see something you like, leave a comment, or just tell us what unusual phenomena, person, or event you'd like us to cover next. Now, let's go back to October of 93, when Letterman was one month into his job at CBS. If you were a fan of comedian Bill Hicks in the mid-80s and early 90s, watching him perform on Late Night with David Letterman was a regular treat. Hicks had performed on the show 11 times, and every set killed. Letterman, a former stand-up himself, was a fan of Hicks and never put any restrictions on the comedian. When Hicks made his first appearance on Letterman's new show, The Late Show with David Letterman, Letterman's feelings about Hicks's material changed. If you tuned into CBS at 11.30 on October 1st, 1993, expecting to see Hicks, you saw something completely different. But we'll get into that in a few minutes. To understand why Letterman censored Hicks, you have to know where the talk show host was in his career. After hosting Late Night on NBC in the 12.30 time slot for 11 years, Letterman left his show and NBC for what he thought would be greener pastures at CBS. We'll cover it soon enough in another episode of Weird History, but Letterman leaving NBC for CBS was a very big deal. In short, NBC jerked Letterman around. Letterman was fairly certain NBC would hand him the keys to The Tonight Show when Johnny Carson retired on May 21, 1992. Instead, NBC went with Jay Leno, the safe choice for the prestigious 11.30 gig. Everyone, even Carson, thought Letterman should have gotten The Tonight Show. After Letterman was passed over, he told NBC to screw themselves, and he accepted CBS's offer to host another late-night talk show, which would eventually be called The Late Show. He would compete directly against The Tonight Show. It was a risky move for CBS. The network doubled Letterman's NBC salary and spent well over $150 million to bring him and his staff to their network and go against Leno. With all that money invested in their late-night lineup, the stakes were high for CBS. It's fair to say, Letterman felt some pressure too. Not only was he determined to beat Leno in ratings, he had to reinvent the show to make it more palatable for his new 11.30 audience. Now Letterman was up against Leno, NBC, CBS, national advertisers, and an older audience who might think wearing a suit of Rice Krispies or jumping on a felt wall in a Velcro suit were juvenile tricks unsuitable for an 11.30 crowd. It was fair to say, Letterman was under pressure to deliver at CBS. This fact would be evident when he invited Hicks to do a set one month into his tenure at The Late Show. To understand why Letterman's decision to ban Hicks was so shocking, we also have to understand who Hicks was at the time. Hicks was no hack comedian with power management who got him on TV. Hicks had earned the spot. By October 1993, Hicks already had a couple of HBO specials. He was a frequent headliner at major comedy festivals, he had several live album releases, and he made his mark in Britain in 1991 at the Edinburgh Festival, where he won the Critics' Award and became an overnight folk hero in the UK. So not only was Hicks' Late Show appearance on October 1st routine, it was heavily anticipated by his fan base. We say this was Hicks' peak, but to be frank, Hicks never reached his full potential. When he performed for the Late Show audience, he was already being referred to as the next George Carlin, but what no one knew about Hicks was that he was dying. On June 16, 1993, about three and a half months before his Late Show appearance, Hicks was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer that had spread to his liver. He had started receiving weekly chemotherapy, even during the days surrounding his Late Show set. If you paid attention to his routine, Hicks would drop hints in his set about a short time on Earth all the time after he was diagnosed. Hicks would often joke that any given performance could be his last, but it was no joke. Hicks was battling for his life, and he knew time was running out. His audience never had a clue. The Late Show had a pretty stacked schedule on October 1st, 1993. Letterman had actor Andy McDowell and Graham Parker as the night's musical guest. Hicks was booked as the evening's closer with a short stand-up set. That evening's show went smooth for the first 50 minutes. 
McDowell promoted Ruby Cairo, a movie so bad it was recut and retitled Deception. Parker sang Passion is No Ordinary Word off his new two-disc anthology, which launched that week. By all accounts, a good show. Then, with maybe 10 or so minutes left in the show, Letterman returned from a commercial break and introduced Hicks as the show's final act. Describing him as a very entertaining comedian, Letterman plugged the stand-up's upcoming show at the Comedy Corner in West Palm Beach, Florida, and Hicks walked onto center stage of the Ed Sullivan Theater for the first time. It would also be the last time he and Letterman would speak to each other again. If you were in the Ed Sullivan Theater, you might have enjoyed Hicks' set. He went hard after pro-lifers and Christianity. Within the first 10 seconds of his set, he did a bit about his upcoming job as host of a new game show which was titled, Let's Hunt and Kill Billy Ray Cyrus. Hicks explained the rules of the fictitious game show. It's fairly self-explanatory. Each week we let the hounds of hell loose. We chase that jarhead, no talent, cracker idiot all over the globe. <laughs> So I finally catch that fruity little ponytail of his, pull him to his knees, put a shotgun in his mouth. <laughs> then we'll be back in 94 with Let's Hunt and Kill Michael Bolton. Now, if you were watching from home, you saw a very different show. After his opening monologue, Letterman announced the evening's guests, the lovely and talented Andy McDowell, legendary rocker Graham Parker, and that was it. There was a clumsy edit to Paul Schaefer, and the broadcast continued. About 40 minutes later, with about 10 minutes left in the show, Letterman came back from a commercial break and announced, to an unknowing television audience, a funny and talented comedian. Then with another choppy edit, he announced some guy no one had ever heard of at the time named Bill Sheft. Sheft was a late night staff writer. But Hicks did perform that night, and as far as he was concerned, his set was a success. The Ed Sullivan Theater crowd roared with laughter, none of his jokes missed, and it was a solid set. Letterman even called Hicks over to his desk after the set and joked around with him before the end credits rolled. Hicks recalled Letterman jokingly said on camera, Good set, Bill. Always nice to have you drop by with an uplifting message. Enjoy answering your mail for the next few weeks. Hicks said when he returned to the green room, staffers in the show were giving him nothing but positive feedback. And why wouldn't the feedback be positive? Like all comedians, Hicks had to submit his set to Letterman and his producers for final approval. The consensus Hicks got that night was, he killed. Letterman liked it, and the Late Show producers liked it. As far as Hicks was concerned, his 12th appearance for his old friend Dave was a success. Around 7 o'clock, about an hour after he left Letterman's theater, Hicks exited the shower in the Manhattan hotel room CBS put him up in for his appearance. The phone was ringing. It was Robert Morton, the executive producer of The Late Show. As the executive producer, one of Morton's jobs was to fall on a sword for Letterman. This evening, he had to tell Hicks that his segment would not be airing. When Hicks heard the news, he replied, I don't understand, Robert. What's the problem? I thought the show went great. According to an interview he granted The New Yorker a couple weeks later, Hicks said that Morton praised his set. He even said he killed it out there. But the CBS Office of Standards and Practices felt that some of the material was unsuitable for broadcast. Hicks questioned which part of his set they found offensive. Before Hicks could finish asking his question, Morton said, almost all of it. After what Hicks called a very long conversation, Morton offered to book another late night appearance and, according to the comedian, took the heat for not vetting the hot points out of his set. After the long phone call, Morton said, Bill, it's not our decision, and apologized to Hicks, explaining that the show had to answer to the network. That would be the last time Hicks would hear from Letterman, Morton, or anyone from CBS. The promise to book him for another appearance seemed to be BS too. The truth was, the CBS program practices department had nothing to do with the edit. The decision to ban Bill Hicks from the episode was solely that of Letterman and the late night producers. On October 24, 1993, Hicks appeared on a small Texas cable access talk show called Cap Z Eyes. In the three weeks since the late show censoring, it looked like Hicks had lost about 15 pounds, his hair was thinning, and he seemed a bit more frail and reserved than usual. His appearance on the show allowed him to exercise all of his spite and venom for Letterman, and everything that had to do with the late show incident by giving a blow-by-blow -blow account of what happened. During the interview, Hicks made a point to say that his set was approved and re-approved by Letterman's producers. He also reiterated that his banned Letterman appearance was just another example of Americans losing their freedom of expression. While Hicks still seemed to show a bit of professional respect to Letterman during the interview, he did call him a sellout. But I come to find out that Dave, you know, I guess $14 million was his price. You know what I mean? Everyone has a price, they say. 
Hicks was referring to Letterman's allegiance to CBS and his new $14 million a year salary they gave him. Letterman sided with money and career rather than his friend. Four months later, Hicks would be dead. In 2009, Letterman aired an episode dedicated to the late comic in which he invited Hicks's mother Mary on the show and apologized to her directly for not airing the set. He also finally aired the censored routine, which held up remarkably well in 09, but might not go over so well these days. The 2009 Late Show episode with Hicks's mother was interesting not just for what it revealed about Hicks at the time, but it revealed that Hicks's mother still seemed hurt by how Letterman's ban affected her critically ill son, that his work deserved better. She even made a couple of comments about how much the ban tore her son and her family apart at the time. Letterman sheepishly mumbled an apology every time she mentioned how hurt her son was. At the end of his interview with Hicks's mother, Letterman aired the set that he had banned 15 years earlier. When Hicks's taped set ended, Letterman told Mary, I've not seen that videotape or any part of it since that night, and seeing it now raises the question, what's the matter with me? What was I thinking? Hicks performed the final show of his career at Caroline's in New York on January 6, 1994. He moved back to his parents' house in Little Rock, Arkansas soon after. In his last weeks, he reread Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings and made telephone calls to friends to say goodbye before he stopped speaking on February 14th. For all of his shocking, groundbreaking work, Hicks would die quietly of pancreatic cancer on February 26th, 1994, at the age of 32. So what do you think? Why did Letterman edit his performance? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from Our Weird History.